Well, good morning, everyone. A slightly earlier start, but it's lovely to see you all here and you're welcome in God's name, whether you're in pre present with us in person or whether you're watching later on on YouTube. Good to have you. A few announcements. First of all, to welcome Colin back to our congregation. It's always good to have you. Thank you for coming. Uh, you will know that uh, our minister is still on sabbatical, and Philip will be returning to work tomorrow uh, after his time on sabbatical. A few announcements just to draw your attention to. Uh, next Sunday, uh, Reverend McRae will be leading our service, and on the 24th, it will be our BB enrollment service. Uh, so we hope that we have a good turnout for that, uh, as well as all our other services. Uh, just some details that Roy would want me to share for the givings that we have had, and we appreciate the generosity and support that has been given. Uh, some other things to draw your attention to. Uh, the prayer times on Wednesday night round in 3.09 are still continuing. They'll be on again on, on Wednesday night, half past seven. Uh, on Wednesday week, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, uh, we have the coffee and chat and uh, Carol McGrath, who some of us recall, member of Rosemary at one time, uh, will be back to tell us about her time in Uganda. Uh, so that will be on Wednesday the 20th. Uh, as far as the Christmas child boxes are concerned, uh, they will be going to, to a collection point uh, this week, and thank you for all who have supported, either online, as some people have, or by actually bringing the boxes to us. Can I also give you a little uh, a forewarning of our church lunch, um, which will be on Sunday, the 1st of December, and the proceeds from that church lunch will be going to the Livingstonia Hospital in Malawi. Uh, if you haven't already received them this morning when you came in, please speak to Roy uh, on the way out, and you'll get your 2025 free will offering envelopes and those will be available for you. Can we also remind you that in November we will be taking donations for the Children's Society Appeal, uh, and any donations are gratefully received. Uh, also, the painting group would want to draw to your attention the fact that they have an, a calendar for this year, uh, and if you want to receive a copy of it or buy a copy of it, please speak to one of the members of the group, and that would be great. Uh, you were very generous uh, at our harvest time with the food bank, uh, and the need continues, and the list of items is in the order of service. Lastly, then, just some thanks. Uh, thank you to all who supported the Christmas sale and coffee morning uh, just Saturday on the 2nd of November, and the total is now up to £1,219 very generous, and we do appreciate that. And we also appreciate all the work that went into it, not just by Margaret, but by many others who made it happen. Uh, also, just to draw attention to the, the flowers behind me, and to just say thank you to Isabel McCormick uh, for her hard work in preparing those, and it's lovely to have the flowers here. So we thank Isabel for that. These are all the announcements for now. Our service will continue, and there will be a, an act of remembrance within that. Thank you. Over to you, Colin. Trevor, thank you for the welcome back. Once again, it's good to be here this morning as we worship God together. If you're following your order of service, there's a wee tweak, or maybe two wee tweaks, just to let you know. Uh, when we sing our first praise, we will then pray together. Uh, rather than read, and then when we get to the uh, second hymn in the service, after that there will be no prayer, after that we go straight from that hymn into a reading. So just in case you get a wee bit confused and you're following the service, don't. There's just two little changes there for us to deal with, and those changes are entirely my doing, so don't blame anybody else. In Psalm 46 we read these words, God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid, even if the earth is shaken and mountains fall into the ocean depths, 
Even if the seas roar and rage, and the hills are shaken by the violence. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let's continue our worship as we join to sing the hymn, Lord, for the years, and we stand to sing, if you're able. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we come to worship you this morning. We come to remember and learn, to remember the lessons of the past, the cost of war, the price of peace the scope of human depravity, 
the extent of human self-sacrifice. Help us, we pray, to learn those lessons, to live and work for peace, to fight only what is evil and corrupt, to serve and not to count the cost, to give our all in the cause of a better world. Almighty God, sovereign Lord of the universe, we come to remember all that you have done, your creative acts, your mighty deeds throughout history, your dealings with your people, your gift of Christ, your love experienced daily in our lives. Remind us of all we owe, lest we forget. Forgive us that so often and so easily we do forget. We fail to remember your sovereign transforming power, to remember you in the good times as well as the bad, to see you in the fellowship of your church, to count our many blessings, to recognize your hand at work in every moment of our lives. Through all things, Lord God, you remember us. Help us today and every day, to remember you. Remind us of all we owe, lest we forget. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just before we turn to our act of remembrance, we're going to watch a short video clip that helps us set the scene and give us some context to what is happening in a moment.
please stand. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Please be seated while we pray. We give you thanks, our Father, for the freedom which we have today. Freedom to live and speak and worship as we please. 
We give you thanks too for the gifts of life and health as we acknowledge that you are the provider of all good things. We give you thanks that through prayer we can communicate with you and you with us. In our prayers today, we remember. We remember those for whom this is a sad day as thoughts go back to the loss of loved ones in conflict. Fill empty hearts with gracious and compassionate love. Today also we pray for those in authority over us, His Majesty the King, the members of Parliament at Westminster, and all who are elected to provide leadership at assembly and local level. Bless them, we pray, with integrity and the spirit of wisdom, truth, and righteousness. We pray for service personnel in our generation, and we remember especially any from our families or this congregation or community serving in dangerous situations today. We pray for those in the PSNI facing continued security threats here in our own province. Shield all who maintain law and order and strengthen them always to do what is right. Surround their families with help and encouragement and support that never fails because it comes from you. We plead for peace in our nation and in our neighbourhoods. We pray that Peace may develop and grow into something that is long-lasting. We plead for peace in our world, not least in the Middle East, where there's conflict that's drawing in Israel and Palestine and Lebanon and Iran and indeed others. We think about the war between Russia and Ukraine. And really, Father, these situations are beyond human solving, so we commend them to your grace. Hasten the day when we are all as concerned about our responsibilities as we are about our rights, more concerned with preserving life than causing death, more concerned to serve you than just satisfy ourselves. Glorify your name through all the earth, we pray, for the sake of the one who taught us all to pray, as we say together these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we stand to sing our next hymn, uh, Tell Me the Old, Old Story.
So as we turn to uh, God's Word this morning, we're going to read some verses from Psalm 77, reading from verses 1 to 15. This is God's Word. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud and he hears me. In times of trouble, I pray to the Lord. All night long I lift my hands in prayer, but I cannot find comfort. When I think of God, I sigh. When I meditate, I feel discouraged. He keeps me awake all night. I am so worried that I cannot speak. I think of days gone by and remember years of long ago. I spend the night in deep thought. I meditate, and this is what I ask myself. Will the Lord always reject us? Will he never again be pleased with us? Has he stopped loving us? Does his promise no longer stand? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has anger taken the place of his compassion? Then I said, what hurts me most is this, that God is no longer powerful. I will remember your great deeds, Lord, I will recall the wonders you did in the past. I will think about all that you have done. I will meditate on all your mighty acts. Everything you do, O God, is holy. No God is as great as you. You are the God who works miracles. You showed your might among the nations. By your power, you saved your people, the descendants of Joseph and of Jacob. Amen, and we pray that God will speak to us through this word this morning. Before we return to it, we're going to sing again this time the hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour.
Remembering is usually a concept related to something positive. You know, birthdays, anniversaries, other such significant events. And men, you will know how quickly the positive becomes a negative when you forget those events and you're in serious trouble for a while. But even when the events that we're remembering are sad, the memory, the remembering at its best is part of the process of helping us cope. And today is a day for remembering. It's always a somber national anniversary. It calls us to pause and reflect and respond to things that happened mostly long ago, some not so long ago, but mainly it's, it's about what happened in, in the two world wars and the effect and the impact they had on the nation. Furthermore, remembering is a theme woven through the scriptures where the word or the concept is used in a variety of different contexts. And we're going to look at some of those this morning. And first of all, at remembering as a promise. God says to his people often, I will remember you. In Genesis, he promises to remember his covenant, of which promise the rainbow is a sign. Every time we see a rainbow in the sky, we're given that visual assurance that God is remembering. He made a promise to us. He bound himself in a relationship with us. In Psalm 103, God's promises, God promises to remember human frailty in what we might describe as a pastoral way. He remembers that we are dust. We are frail. We are weak. We are prone to failure. Eugene Peterson described it as us being made of mud. And we need his gentle embrace. There are times when we need his firm hand. But often there are moments or phases in life and really we just need a divine hug, don't we? A divine cuddle. God's gentle embrace. He reassures us of his relationship with us. Parent-like love and care at something far beyond its best. God has promised to remember his binding commitment to us, and he never let it go. God has promised to remember our frailty and love us despite it, or maybe even because of it. God says, I will remember you. And that's got a positive tone to it. But also, God's people are to say back to him, God, I will remember you. We, we read something of this uh, in the psalm that we've just been reading through. I will remember your great deeds, Lord. I will recall the wonders you did in the past. I will think about all that you've done. I will meditate on all your mighty acts. Today's the day when we keep a promise as a nation. We remember the deeds of those who are prepared to offer up their lives to secure certain important and precious freedoms. And it's important that the nation keeps its promise to the preceding generations to honor the sacrifice and reflect on the horrific human cost of war. And that becomes more important as the generations pass. I mean, I'm not quite as old as your session clerk, but it's close. It's closer than I'm comfortable with. And really, despite my age, I wasn't a war child. It was a long time after the end of the Second World War that, that I was born. So I'm depending and was depending and always have depended on others telling the story. But it needs to be told and we need to remember. We need to remember the sacrifice, and we need to reflect on the horrific cost of human war. And so it is with the Lord. As we, as we remember events in the nation on days like today, we must on every day remember God. And remember how his love is demonstrated to us in good deeds. It's not just words. Creation, harvest, salvation. 
So on this day for remembering, let us also recall the promise of God to remember us and let us, as we remember the brave deeds of those who suffered and died in the wars of the nation, also join with the psalmist in our promise to remember the great acts of God for us. That's remembering as a promise. And then there is remembering as thanksgiving. There's a natural progression between remembering in the context of God's promises and remembering as an act of thankfulness. Today we're thankful for sacrifices made by many. The Psalms are full of that call to be thankful. In Psalm 98, the psalmist gives thanks that the Lord has remembered his people. That's a cause for thanksgiving. In other Psalms, 106 and 111, the psalmist gives thanks that the Lord has remembered his covenant, that promise we mentioned a moment ago. In Psalm 136, the psalmist gives thanks, especially that the Lord has not forgotten his people in their times of trouble. And there's plenty in the New Testament too, drawing us to remember thankfully. In the Gospel of Luke, Mary and Zechariah offer thanks because the Lord has remembered them as people to be used in the great redemption plan in the lives of, of John and then of Jesus. In Philippians, Paul gives thanks for every remembrance of his people in the church. So there's thankful remembrance, not just of God, but also of God's people. We're called to be thankful for one another. And maybe there's something here we're not always so good at. We're not often as good as we might be at being thankful, are we? But it's at the center of this day for the nation. We give thanks to God for others. And we need to recapture a spirit of thankfulness, not just on this day, but in daily life. God is good. And as we remember his goodness in creation, in salvation, in providing Christian fellowship, we need, as we've done this morning, to sing of his thankfulness to him for it. On this day, on this weekend, as we've been remembering as an act of thankfulness to those who served the nation bravely in days past, and indeed in recent days too, let us pledge to renew a, a spirit of true thankfulness within us to God and to God's people for his and their goodness to us. So there is remembering as thanksgiving. And then there is remembering as, remembering as a command or an exhortation. That cartoon was not drawn by anybody who owns a dog. All right? When was the last time you pointed to your dog and they sat like that in front of you and just looked up at you? If you've managed to do that, tell me, because that doesn't work with my dog. Unless, of course, I'm holding food in my hand and then he's, he's mine for as long as I have the food. There are many times in Scripture when we're commanded or we're at least exhorted to remember. In Exodus, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In Deuteronomy, the Lord exhorts Moses to remember the days of slavery, to remember the bad times so that we appreciate the good times even more. In First Chronicles, we're exhorted to, to remember the miracles that God has done. In Ecclesiastes, we're exhorted to remember our Creator while we're young. In Luke, Jesus commands us to eat bread and drink wine, to remember what he has done for us. In all of these situations, the command or exhortation to remember is intended in such a way that remembering will change how we live. Not just that we remember for the sake of it. And for over 100 years, we've been exhorted to remember on the Sunday nearest the 11th, of November. But will the remembrance of this day, again this year, change anything? I mean, for instance, will remembrance of the awful price that was paid prompt us to explore every possible avenue to avoid war and ensure that if the final conclusion is that there is no other way, enable us to determine that our motives are not selfish we're not just craving power or control over one nation or another nation. That inevitably leads to conflict and in turn 
to devastation. Similarly, we begin to think of the things that God has called us to remember, the exhortations and commands that he's given us. How are we with that? When we remember the command to honor God's day, does that affect our priorities in the first day of the week, which is the Christian Sabbath? Is that commitment an every Sunday thing? Or is it just when we feel like it? If there's something to distract us, no matter how trivial, then we do that first. And Sunday can wait. What difference is a Sunday to any other day for us in our lives? We're called to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. When we remember the life and death of Jesus Christ for us, that we might be forgiven. Does it change the way we live wherever we are tomorrow morning? Whatever our routines are in the week, whether it's at home, whether it's socializing with friends or work or school or university or family responsibilities. Is Jesus remembered in our lives and our attitude and our conversations in what's often now called our front lines? Does remembering how Jesus forgave us encourage us to forgive those who sinned against us? Or do we just happily carry the grudges and determine to get even when the chance arises? When we're called to remember the miracles of God and all that he's done, does that persuade us to live and act as though God has not lost his ancient power and he can still change things? In our day and generation, it's good to remember what God has told us to do and put it into practice. And then there is remembering as a plea. The call to remember the miracles that God has done leads us to this final context for remembering. In Exodus, God pleads with the Lord to remember that he has chosen the nation. In Psalm 25, the psalmist pleads with the Lord that he would remember his love and kindness. In Psalm 74, the psalmist pleads to remember the nation and deliver them. In the prophecy of Habakkuk, the prophet pleads with the Lord to remember mercy. There's no doubt that in our generation, while the, the, whilst the oppression of natural or of national sorry, war is not engulfing us, at least not right now, there are dark clouds hovering over us. There is no shortage of evil in the world today. It remains of great necessity that as we remember the miracles that God has done, we, we add our pleas for church and nation in our day and generation. Please for God to continue to bless the church and deliver the nation and to understand how the witness of the church remains God's chosen method of rescuing the nation from its darkness through the light of Christ. Did you catch that? The Bible is clear. The hope of the world is the church of Christ as it lives for Jesus. That's a huge responsibility, isn't it? God has entrusted the people around us to his mercy through our witness. So let us continue to plead and to intercede that God will intervene, that God will remember, that God will deliver our nation, bearing in mind that we may be part of the answer to our own prayers. There's one more thing as I close. And that's about not remembering. And so therefore the conclusion of this sermon is in contrast with, with what has gone before because there is a time for not remembering. Let me read those verses that are on the screen from the book of Jeremiah. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me, 
from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. And then this, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Here we have the great Christian hope of the new thing that God has done in Christ. He has remembered our sins no more, but placed them upon his Son on the cross. What a promise. What a promise. What a future. And indeed, what a present moment too. We sang a hymn at the start of the service that talks about putting the past behind us. It's a hymn my wife doesn't like because we sang it at the end of our time of service in Kerncastle, our first church, and every time we sing it in a church service, she goes to pieces. It's hard at times to put the past behind us and move on. She really likes the hymn, but it, it speaks very much to her. So I shouldn't have said she doesn't like it because she does, but it's a hard one for her to sing. Maybe you have that experience. Maybe there are times it's hard for you to leave the past behind. Maybe that past has become or is becoming a barrier to our right relationship with the Lord. We need to remember that because of who Jesus is and what he did on the cross, and only because of that, it is actually possible for us to leave the past behind us and press on to what God has in store. We need to learn not to remember at times. Whether that's nationally or corporately or individually, we need to not remember the sins and failures of the past. Commit them to God, seek his forgiveness, and move on. We mustn't remember in a way that leaves us chained to what has gone before and with no hope of what's ahead. Remembering, thankfully, can be a positive and healing process. Obeying commands and responding to exhortations is of immense value. Pleading or interceding that God will remember us is vitally important also. But there is a time for not remembering to. Amen. We're going to sing our concluding praise, uh, which is the hymn, Thine Be the Glory, Risen Conquering Son.
that after the benediction we remain standing as we sing two verses of the National Anthem. Let us pray. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always.